your argument uh, is that, as it happened with respect to other uh, activities, the internet is going to challenge universities and mm -hmm. higher education. But is your argument that it's going to change universities or the argument that it's actually going to make universities disappear? Well, universities won't disappear entirely. I mean, they're always, you know, big institutions like that take a very long time to, to die. And of course, there are many things that you can only do as a university. Um, you wouldn't want to go and see a brain surgeon who, who'd learn brain surgery by post. Or, and you wouldn't, probably wouldn't want to have a, a lawyer defending you in court who learned everything by you know, watching things on YouTube. But there's a whole raft of, of, of undergraduate education, at least, which is um, perhaps better done in other places. A mixture, I, I propose a mixture of independent study with world-class study um, materials lectures and so on, which, you, which would be delivered online, plus mentorship and, and um, in person and, and apprenticeship in, in the workplace. But if I understand correctly, your argument is not simply that the internet, online courses, online teaching can do some things better mm -hmm. than at least the mass universities can do, perhaps not the elites, but the mass universities can offer, and so it can replace some of those dim some dimensions from that kind of mass universities, but is also an argument, if I understood correctly your talk, that is linked to what people will expect in the future about teaching and about learning. Right. Right. So, so the, to the first point, of course, um, you know, previously, if you wanted to hear the best lecturers, you wanted to hear the best academics explaining their subject, you had to be in the room with them. And to be in the room with them, you had to be a member of their institution. If you wanted to, you know, you wanted to hear um, whoever your favourite academic is, myself, yourself, right? So <laughs> exactly. If you wanted to, you know, if I if I wanted to have the famous Maduro series on, on constitutional law, I like the sound of that, <laughs> then then I would have to be a member of the elite Maduro Academy, which would of course be incredibly expensive and very difficult to get into, and there would be only three of us and it would be very, very difficult. That was before, whereas now, we can put you in front of a video camera and you can, uh, you can um, make your talents available to a much wider audience. And so given the choice between seeing an average lecturer in person, perhaps in a room of a thousand people, or sitting privately at home in a comfortable armchair with you on with with the best lecturer in the world on my iPad, and I can pause it and I can rewind it and I can I can be drinking coffee at the same time and all of that. Um, one is really good, and the other one is a terrible experience. And so, because we're used to consuming media through these sorts of devices. Um, and because we're used to being able to pause things and rewind them and watch them again a hundred times and because we're used to having, having information delivered to us through those. And because that sort of thing is happening at high school level already with things like the Khan Academy, there is a, I'm, I'm convinced that there will, there will be a, a social expectation that if I'm going to pay a lot of money to go to an institute of higher learning, then I want to receive the lectures from the best people in the world. And the fact that those best people aren't geographically in that institution makes no sense. But you say that, that universities also perform a role in terms of certification and in terms of socialization. Right, so at the moment they, so they have three roles. So you have an ed education role, they teach you stuff that you remember after you've left. There's a soci socialization role which is you know, it's that period between 18 and 21 where you're sort of growing up and you're having your first, you know, you've left home for the first time and you're having your first adult relationships and so on. So there's a, there's that, there is a... So the, the internet will not be able no. to replace that socialization role. No, but... And this is, a, this is a difficult thing for people who went to university to understand. You don't have to go to university to have those experiences. They come from somewhere else. They come from somewhere else, right. You know, you're still going to meet girls. It's, everything's fine. You know? <laughs> um, so there's that so socialization, but, but it's, that's not necessarily going to be provided by university. And then there's the accreditation. And the accreditation thing, again, 
The only reason that it's provided by a university at the moment is through tradition, but it kind of doesn't make, again, it kind of doesn't make any sense to not have a national or international accreditation mm. standard that says, you know, you, your degree is com directly comparable with a degree from another institution. It's if you just, follow these online, if you have these tutorials, right, you, you will can, then have a degree that is certified. That is certified by somebody that's equivalent to a degree that you that you might get from an from a physical institution that you go to for a few years. Um, now that sort of accreditation is happening already in the online learning field. It's just that the type of accreditation they give isn't considered at the moment to be equivalent to a BA or a BSc or, or an MA or something like that. But, but that's only a matter of time. There's nothing that says that the two things can't be made you know, comparable. Now, it might be that you need to do four years online study to be the equivalent of a three-year in-place degree or something like that. But, but then you're just haggling. You're just haggling about the price at that point. I mean, you, once you've made that concession that one thing could be it, have an accreditation that's equivalent to the, the other. The question is the how. The yeah. how, right, and how long and so on. Not is it, is it possible in the first place. And I think it's, it's quite obviously possible in the first place. Because, again, depending on your academic um, tradition, a good deal of, of, of university undergraduate degrees, at least, consist of independent study tutorials and a big exam at the end. If your entire accreditation process is based on the results of the big exam at the end, why does it matter at all what you did before the day you walked into the examination hall? It doesn't matter at all. It's, it's, it's kind of, you know, if that's what your accreditation is based on. Now, of course, for people who are going on to higher forms of academia, what you did before the, before the exam is very important because, you're, because the, academy is, the academy is trying to make a well-rounded academic. But for people who aren't interested in moving on, they just need the degree to be able to go and get a job, then if, if, all, then, if all they require is the certificate and society requires them to have a wide-ranging, general, liberal arts education somewhere in the background, um, there's no reason at all why that can't be done through a mixture of other forms of tuition. And then there'd be some form so of... So your argument is basically also that we can't think about education just by looking at elite education and research universities. Yes, yes. We need to think about what we want of it and what is going to evolve in terms of mass education. Yes, yes of course, because... And, and it's, it's really interesting that academia has, hasn't recognised the fact that the number of people taking degree courses has massively increased over the past few years. Um, not all of those people who are those new entrants, that, those additional people, n not all of those people are doing it because they, because they dream of going on and doing a doctorate. You know, it's because society now, at least in Western Europe and North America, kind of requires you to have a degree. It's, it's almost the entry ticket to, to being middle class that you have to have a degree. But what that degree is in is irrelevant to most people because they're just using it to tick a box. Um, and so if that's the case, then as a society, we have to look and say, OK, we're gonna, young people are going to take three years and a lot of money, get themselves into quite a bit of debt in order to get this certificate. What would be the best way of educating those people? Is the best way making them part of a physical institution and going through this process? Or is perhaps the best way to say, OK, if we assume that you have to have a degree, then maybe you would be better off doing a degree as part of an apprenticeship and a, with a, an informal mentoring and, and, and a much wider liberal, liberal arts independent study curriculum. At which point, when they do graduate, they're already part of the workforce. They're probably much more highly skilled in the thing that they want that they're going to do anyway because they've been apprenticed. And the sort of education that they've gotten has, has embedded them in society in a richer way than going away to university and, and studying in cloisters for three years. 
Um, in many ways, there is a theory about primary school education that says the reason primary school education is five days a week and nine till four is because that it is because it's actually socially um, socially approved daycare for children. Right? You put your children in school so you can go to work. And in many ways, I think the drive for people to go and get an undergraduate degree is sort of daycare for 18 to 21 year olds. This is where we as a society are going to put these young kids, we're going to throw them into university and we're going to you know, give them this experience and we're going to make sure they stay in, they, they, they have student ghettos where the, where the students stay in a particular culture that they embed themselves in because it keeps them out of the workforce for a bit. Um, However, and of course in, in Western Europe and North America, we're running out of young people and we're running out of skilled people who are skilled in, in things which didn't exist long enough ago for there to be university courses in it. The high-tech industry is being a good example. So we would be better off as a society saying to a pe you know, there's a va my specialty is in technology and the, there's a vast class of people who intellectually would be very well suited to go to university, but are even more suited to go and learn the job by doing the job. And, and for society, um, that's better because the companies that they work for, the companies that they set up, are the things that drive society forward, not sort of putting, making people put their lives on pause for three years so they can get a certificate that's 